Hello. In this quick tutorial we're going to look at how to use Substance Painter, particularly its use of layers and generators. Uh, we can do some procedural work um, inside of Substance Painter that will allow it to automatically find edges for things like uh, distress or chipping away at things uh, and crevices for things like dirt and rust. The important thing is, is before we can do this though, we need to do a little bit of preparation. Our preparation will need to take four main steps. First, in Maya, we're going to need to do a little bit of preparation with our geometry materials in UV. We'll need to make sure that our geometry is clean, that all of the geometry has assigned materials, and of a special importance, that all of the uh, geometry has UVs. Substance does not allow for UV layout, so we want to make sure and take care of that. Um, after that, in Substance Painter, we can start to work on some of the project setup. This will include the steps of bringing in FBX that we have exported from Maya uh, and making sure that we have everything set up to allow us to start to paint. Before we can start to use generators and other sorts of high-end tools in Substance, though, we need to bake down some textures that will allow us to find contour and some world normals um, so that we can do the steps we need to do. So let's start with Maya. A lot of the preparation in Maya actually depends on what it is you plan to do with the model. Uh, in this case, just for learning situations, we're actually going to split it up into several different parts that will allow us to texture different parts with different techniques. Uh, you might, uh, if you're doing this for game, actually build this all as a single mesh with a single shader. But for what we've done here is I have started breaking this down into individual parts. This model uh, is just comes from um, Turbo Squid. It's a free model by Warped and 319. It's a nice one. Uh, pretty clean geometry and easy for what we're doing here. What I've done is uh, inside of uh, Maya, carefully gone through and organized these essentially by um, materials. These are different objects. Each of these uh, poly meshes are set up by materials. Importantly, uh, if we look at the hypershade, um, each of these um, objects actually has their own material that I've carefully labeled as material so they'll have their own texture ID uh, inside of um, inside of Substance Painter. Um, I've also uh, lastly made sure that all of these objects have a good UV map. Um, so if we take a look at any of these objects then we've got a reasonably well laid out uh, and uh, well packed uh, UV collection of UV shells. Notice that none of them are overlapping, um, that they are all just uh, straight uh, straight layout so that we don't have any uh, conflicting UV space. Alright, with all of those set up, the last thing that I did just as force of habit is make sure that you've deleted all of your history so you don't have any history floating around. I've also selected all of the objects and made sure that I have frozen the transformations so that all of that stuff is clean. This is probably more valuable to you uh, in the long run. Once this is all set up, uh, the way that I like to export to Substance Painter is via FBX. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, export all and here we can just export to the desktop as an FBX file. Um, the settings here don't really matter. We don't really need to embed media because currently they're all simple uh, solid shapes. Uh, but when you're ready, just name it whatever you want uh, and make sure and export it as an FBX and you're ready to go. On to Substance Painter. With our geometry exported from Maya, we can now bring it into Substance and start to work with it. Um, the first thing that we'll want to do is make a new project. Uh, so we'll just come File and New. It's going to ask us, uh, at least in 2018.1, it's going to ask us what kind of output we want to do. If you know you're going to Unreal or Unity, you can use either of these. But for what we're doing uh, now, we're going to go ahead and just use the standard PBR metallic roughness method. Um, and we can still get this out to Unity or uh, uh, Unreal, whichever we would prefer. It next asks you for a mesh, so the, here we're, we, we would come and go ahead and uh, select the mesh that we just exported, and the rest of these setups should be fine for now. We'll go ahead and click on OK, and this will bring in the mesh. Now just a little bit of uh, information about here, so just like with Maya, left, uh, Alt left mouse click allows you to tumble, you can middle mouse Alt middle mouse click to pan, and Alt right mouse click uh, to dolly in and out. Um, if you look at what this has brought in, then you'll see all of these materials that we saw in the hypershade back in Maya. 
Now with any of these materials, if you select a particular material, you'll notice that in our layout here we'll see the UV layout, that it's automatically generated um, some baseline textures for what we've got here. If you click on Solo, you can um, select uh, whichever one of these particular um, objects uh, you're painting on, which is a nice way to work. Uh, and then if you hit um, All, you can see all of them again. Now, um, we could just start to paint on here, and in fact, we could just drop a, a texture on it. However, if we want to be able to use um, any of the techniques we're going to be working with with generators, then we need to create some other mesh textures. This is what's called the texture set list. Uh, these are all the materials that we've created. They're using just the default shader that we've told it to. Down here on the layers, we can start to be working with painting any of the layers, but there's also this texture set settings. Here you'll see that uh, this particular texture set has base, height, roughness, metallic, uh, and normal stuff that we would anticipate. But as we scroll down there a little bit, let me just pull this down, then you're going to see that there's also the ability to do other sorts of mesh maps. Um, this will allow us to do things like finding curved edges or hollow spaces. So I'm going to click on the bake mesh map here. What this is going to say is, look, these are the things that I plan to, to bake out. Uh, for what we're doing here, most of these uh, settings here will be uh, just fine. Uh, we can do whatever we need to um, on these. Um, but when we come back up to the common here, then we're going to see several things that become important. One is that there's this option for high poly parameters. This is especially powerful idea that you can be using a high poly mesh, perhaps built in um, ZBrush or some other uh, method, uh, and you can use that to find the curvature and the normal maps, which is a really, really great way to do it. In our case, what we're doing is we're starting with a low poly mesh, so we're just going to use the use low poly mesh as high poly mesh here, instead of bringing in uh, any sort of high poly um, situation, and that will uh, work for what we're doing here. We just wanted to be able to uh, understand the geometry a little bit better. For what we're doing here, I want to make sure that I bake it for all of the materials. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Bake All Texture Sets. Now notice I'm baking to a 1024 by 1024 map. Uh, that's probably bigger than we need on any of these, but for the close-up details in the demo, I'm going to go ahead and leave that at 1024 by 1024. So baking all texture sets will begin the process of baking all the texture sets for uh, all, uh, the things that we need for all of these. Now this can take a while. Uh, last night I was doing one at 2048 by 2048 and it uh, took over an hour to bake everything out. So for now uh, I'm going to let this bake and I'll be back. Alright, we're back. Uh, at 1024 by 1024 it didn't take very long for it to output it. Uh, you'll notice that uh, by default now we've got some AO stuff here. You'll also see that in the texture set settings we have a bunch of other information including ambient occlusion, normals, and curvature. Uh, so this will understand um, how this mesh works. It actually looks better already just with the AO in it. Um, but these other curvature things will allow us to really start to, to build what's happening. Make sure definitely by this point that you take some time to save it. Um, uh, to whatever you want, uh, but make sure you're saving it. When you save in Substance Painter, it actually brings the FBX into the Substance file, so you don't have to worry about that old FBX anymore. Um, but when you're starting to work with these more complex forms, then you want to make sure that you've uh, taken care to save as you go. So some of the most intuitive and basic ways to use um, Substance Painter, of course, it's kind of beyond what we're talking about here, but uh, let's come in and just a quick review. Of course, is the idea of being able to paint um, colors uh, onto a surface. So for instance, if I'm looking at the gauntlet material, I can look at the layers uh, for that material and start to look down at the different attributes that are currently available. So for instance, the default here um, has color, height, roughness, metal, and normals on there. So for instance, if I come in the base color, I could come and select a color. Uh, and then if I used um, any of the brushes, let's come down here and grab uh, any of these brushes and started painting across and I could paint color on it. Um, and in some ways that's really intuitive, especially if I have a good Wacom tablet, but this is just kind of the very basics of what uh, Substance Painter does and uh, it doesn't really get you into the real great things that it that's, a, that's available here. I'm going to come into the materials um, and let's grab one of these, say uh, Iron Pure, and I'm going to take that material and drop it onto my layer. What that does is 
puts this uh, material as one of the layers uh, to define both color, height, roughness, and metal. Uh, as you look down here, then you can change everything from the scale that the texture appears, that the material appears on it. But then as you come down here, you can start to see all the different channels that are now available. Now, some of them are uh, pretty obvious. For instance, if the metallic gets uh, changed closer to black, it becomes less metal. And as the roughness becomes closer to um, black, then we get completely um, a completely mirror-like or a very diffuse um, reflection. But here, when we're trying to make use of, HD, of uh, PBR, the better thing to do is start to think about how we can plug in more complex forms than simply uniform color. Um, so for instance, I can come down into the roughness, and instead of using uniform color for this, I'm going to come in and start to use uh, anything else. Now there's a whole bunch of different um, ones that we could do. Um, I like the scratch um, collection of, of grunge maps there. Um, what happens is if you click any of these, then what it does is it imports that uh, particular alpha, that particular texture, in to define what the roughness is. So suddenly we can start to start to break that up um, in some some ways that I that I think are better. Um, so here we can try. Let's try another one. So we can try a variety of different ones. Um, remember, if you um, hold the uh, shift key down and right drag, then you can rotate the environment around that, so you can see what it is. Still think that's probably showing too much. Let's try. Uh, Maybe that one, how about, uh, that one's not enough, so I'm just going to try some of these, just kind of playing with them. I could play with the balance um, on these and kind of turn that up or down if I wanted to. Um, I'll probably kind of stick with that one um, for what, what we've got built here. Now this starts to give me kind of a baseline um, texture, baseline material that's happening here. Again, all I'm doing is plugging in one of the built-in um, uh, texture maps. Um, into that particular material's roughness channel. So being able to do that um, starts to starts to help that out. Now what becomes really powerful is the idea that we can lay, uh, layer materials on top of each other. So for instance, uh, let's come in and just grab, um, oh, let's say steel painted. And I'm going to drag steel painted and put it on top of there. What happens is by default now the steel painted is going to completely um, cover um, this up. If we look at the steel painted and we kind of scroll down, uh, then you're going to see that this particular one also has some other sorts of things, including paint color. Um, and it defines uh, as part of uh, part of its fill most of the other attributes. Um, but what I can do is I want to use this to start to talk about the idea of masks. The idea of a mask is that we can start to um, leave certain parts of this material out. So for instance, if I come to the steel painted, right click on it and add a white mask, for instance, um, what it does is that this is a mask just like in Photoshop. Anything white will, will be able to see it. Anything black will become transparent. Um, so what I can do here is I'm going to come in, I'm going to be painting on this mask itself and come and grab any of the um, brushes that I want. Let's just grab one of these for instance for a second. And then as I come out here and start to paint, as I'm painting uh, with black onto this um, image, then you see how it peels that paint away and reveals the steel um, beneath it. Now in some ways, if you click the right mouse button, you can quickly adjust some other settings here. In some ways this is really a fun way to start to come in and manually adjust that. Again, uh, all I'm doing is kind of painting away the chunks that are sitting there. And it can be a really effective way to work with this. Um, but there's some other procedural um, things that we can do to make this work a little bit faster. But it's important that you understand this mask. So what I'm going to do here for a second is I'm going to remove that mask. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to realign these really quick. So the steel is beneath the iron pure. The idea here is that I'm going to use a mask on the iron pure to let the blue stuff show up underneath the paint, the painted steel. So to do this, I'm going to come and again, I'm going to create a mask. Uh, let's make sure it's set up like this. I'm going to create, uh, oh, let's go ahead and do a white mask um, for now so that we can see all of those. With the mask selected, I'm going to right click and choose to add a generator. 
Now the generator is a way of telling um, Substance Painter to analyze and use either the world normals or the curvature or other kinds of uh, information that it knows about this mesh to procedurally decide where it is going to change that mask. So with that generator created, I can come down into the generator here, and let's say here that what I want to do is work with this metal edge wear. Um, there's the preview. So you can see that what that does is that the metal edge wear will start to make it so that places where there's an edge, it will start to make that disappear. So you can see that there's where it's kind of dropped it down. It might be too much um, to begin with here, uh, but because we've got that metal edge wear, I can come down to that generator and do everything from adjust the wear layer, right? So I can decide how much that's actually going to take off of there. Um, so I could maybe drop that down there. I could cha change what that contrast would be. I could even change um, how the uh, how the grunge was going to work across that. Um, and how soft I was going to have that. So here I'd probably want that pretty, pretty harsh um, as we're as we're coming through there. Now you can choose. It's using the curvature map to kind of decide where uh, where to do that. So you kind of play with all of these settings to try and decide uh, what it is you're you're actually after. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit too much um, because I want to show how I can kind of peel this back. Even though this isn't bad, I like the idea that along the fingers um, we've kind of worn all the paint off. Although down in the corners there, that's that's remained there. What I am thinking though is that we probably have too much taken off the fingers. So what I want to do is I actually want to mask this output. Now this mask right here is defined by the generator so I, I'm not going to be able to uh, adjust the mask there. However if I take this iron pure make a new folder and I'm going to call this my uh, iron masked um, and put it inside of that folder, what I can do is I can mask this folder. So I essentially mask everything that's inside of it. So I'm going to right click, uh, right click on it and choose to add a, uh, let's do a white mask um, to start with. But now I can start to paint with, oh, let's try one of these other brushes maybe. Yeah, one of these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure my flow is pretty high here just so we can see what's going on maybe make my brush a little bit smaller. But what will happen here is now as I start to paint with black, I can start to paint away effect. Um, so what I can do is come down here and say come through here and if I decide that's too much, what I can do is I'm painting away again on the mask, right? So what I'm doing is painting away some of that effect so I can allow uh, the blue paint beneath to kind of pop out um, through that so I can have a little bit more uh, effect for what's going on here. Maybe I'm going to go ahead and punch this up a little bit. Let's keep the size pretty small here. Now again, I'm doing this with my mouse, which is a terrible way to do it. And the Wacom tablet is really a better, better way to get hold of this, but this is a way to kind of roughly adjust any of that procedural stuff if you want to kind of get rid of some of uh, some of the output. So maybe I'll go quite a bit larger with this. Maybe I'll use uh, oh, let's yeah, let's try one of these, quite a bit larger, and I'm just going to kind of tack, tack that in a little bit, kind of single clicks uh, to kind of uh, maybe build some more of that paint um, back in there as I go. So a pretty easy way to kind of start to start to build this up. Now there's there's more that we can do. For instance, um, let's say that I want to make sure that I'm using the same kind of technique, but get some rust kind of inside in the grungy places where moisture would accumulate. Um, so again, this is much the same way. Um, let's go and find a uh, baseline material that we can use for this. Uh, so we'll come down into materials and let's go ahead and just grab one. It's called rust. Rust fine. We'll just use that. Uh, I'm going to drop that on there, which uh, to start with, it of course covers everything, which is not what we want to do. Now I could manually come in and mask all that out, um, or I could come in and add a uh, new, uh, let's do a white mask here. And with that mask selected, I'm going to right click, choose to add a generator. The generator in this case that I'm going to add is going to be, there's actually one called dirt. And I like the dirt one because what it does is kind of the opposite of the metal is it tries to find 
places where there's actually a, a divot, a, a dip. So when I go ahead and click on that, then you can see that suddenly what it does is procedurally looks for places where the stuff is, is dropped in. Now again, uh, this is generally pretty good, but maybe there's some places that it's too big or too much. Um, so what I can do is I'm going to take this, make a new folder. This is going to be my Rust mask. Make sure that this entire thing is inside of that folder. Uh, I'm going to create a uh, white mask here, and then I can start to come in. And if I want to turn some of that down, for instance, um, then I can just come in and start to start to paint some of that away. Um, maybe I'll play with a much lower flow here, um, so that I can make this a little bit a little bit gentler. And then I can start to decide what's the story I'm really trying to tell um, with this particular um, material. So perhaps maybe down in the palm, I don't want so much rust because he always is holding a weapon or something there, so I can start to kind of uh, pull that out. Let's maybe pull this up a little bit. Um, so I can start to kind of rough that out. But again, uh, these end up being much more organic ways to start to build and procedural ways to build that then is kind of um, shifted with uh, manual painting techniques to create much more complex forms. All right, so you can see how that's starting to come together. Uh, again, the idea of painting with masks and using generators as masks. Anyway, hope that's helpful. I'll see you next time.